Okay, I am gonna show you the first steps in designing a schematic similar to this with a real world BMS project. And this video specifically, we're gonna start focusing on the wiring of the boilers. So BMS boiler wiring. So let's get into it. So you can see here that what I've done is I've already created the initial layout of the schematic. We've got the line there, the thick line, and that is everything below that is equipment out in the field. Everything above that is equipment within the control panel. Um, what you're seeing me do now is I'm just, I'm very anal and I'm very particular about spacings when drawing a schematic for the first time. Now, obviously I'm taking you through this step by step for the first time. Once you've created a schematic or two, as you can see here, you can build up a library of pre-built pre components, pieces of equipment that you can just copy and paste over and over again. Um, but what you're seeing me do here is, is create something from scratch, and I'm gonna walk you through that. So those blocks that you see up there, they're kind of, they are what is gonna be the boiler, and then we're gonna have like the wiring connection points um, in in that, in well, you'll see in a second. So at the moment, I'm just finding a isolator because this is obviously going to be the main power isolator going to the boiler out in the field. So I'm just flipping those over in my library bank that I've got over there, and I'm just dragging that over. So this is going to be the local isolator out in the field to the boiler. So you can see it's below the line, which means that it's out in the field. Now, you can see that I've created a heat emitter pump, you know, this block already. So I'm just gonna copy and paste that and use it for, for the boiler. Because there's gonna be, you know, similar connections. Can move forward here. And now what I'm doing is I'm actually creating, I've I've created that from scratch. And now I what you just saw me do there was actually create it into a block. So that's like a saved block now that I can, that's saved within the CAD software that I can just call upon if I need it in the future. Or, but what's much easier is just to have like a big bank of all of your components, you know, in, in a schematic, uh, model page that you can see here with the black get black get back get my words out black background you can see I'm just saving it as a block again so we've got the spacing of that block now that that line that you just saw. Now I'm moving over this kind of default block over to the drawing. Yeah, you can see, so it's dead center within the spacing outside of the panel on the schematic. And now what I would, although you can't see me doing this, I've actually got the tech manual up on another screen, the tech manual to this boiler, which is telling me all of the connection points that I'm wiring into. And this is what I'm doing here. All the terminals on the boiler side, I'm obviously now labeling those in line with what I'm seeing on the tech manual.
And by the way, guys, you can see the keys that I'm pressing. I've got a key logger, so you can see, there you go, you can kind of see what I'm actually doing on the keyboard here. So yeah, just con continuing to label that out. Now I'm gonna copy copy the text sizes from another block. I wanna keep things just consistent all the way through. So any block is gonna have the same size, letters, spacing. So if I've done that on another block, I can just copy it over and use it on this block and obviously just rename it to what's what's relevant. So here you can see this, because we're creating a system for a BMS, we're gonna have like modular control on the boiler using a zero to 10 volt control signal. So rather than just being an on off signal that you get you know, in a home, it's either on or it's either off, you can, with BMS systems to get more efficiency, Reduced en reduce energy costs. Um, you can actually control it. So rather than just being on or off, you can actually modulate with the zero to 10 volts. So if you want like a, a lot of heat, you can feed the boiler 10 volts, let's say, and that will go up to like 90 degrees. Or if you want maybe medium heat like 40 degrees or no maybe like 60 degrees you might give the boiler five volts and that way we can like level out like the heating curve based on demand based on temperatures and it's just a much more efficient way of yeah of heat control basically so that's why we're using the zero to 10 volt control rather than just an on off signal So just use the line feature there, as you could see. I'm just making sure now that the spacing is correct. I need to add some more terminals for this block. Because although I copied this block that I'd already created for a pump, there wasn't enough, ter there's more terminals on this boiler than there is on the pump. So I need to add some more terminals, which is what you can see now. And I'm just copying the text over We can skip forward a bit here. Yeah, so I think this is the the run light or the run output and the fault output. So if the boiler is running, then it sends a signal back to the control panel. So we're going from the boiler back into the control panel to tell us or to tell the system that it's either running or it's in fault. And that's where we see lights flash up on the front of the control panel telling us the state of that boiler so we can quickly identify if there's an issue. But at the same time, we're also going to be sending that same signal, whether it's running or in fault, back to the PLC, where we can do clever stuff off the back of that signal, but we can also send a signal via email, via text message, via app notification to either the facility management team or one of the engineers on site to let them know straight away, ah, oh, there's a there's an issue with the boiler. You know, if it's on if it's in a hotel, it's critical that this information is communicated quickly. So 
an engineer can respond almost proactively. You know, it's going to be reactive, but it's very, very quick reactive. Rather than just like the fault happening, no one knows about it until a client staying in the hotel doesn't have hot water or doesn't have heat or whatever. The engineers know straight away so they can rectify it before it is a problem to, you know, other people downstream. If it's obviously a business like a hotel, that's extremely important that they don't have their clients without hot water or or heating. So yeah, this these signals could be sent to the facility management team by text message, email, app notification. It also could be sent to the team cert providing service and maintenance contracts. So if they've got like a, a team monitoring this, um, they could be made aware as well and then they could potentially log in remotely see if there's anything that's caused that problem and they could potentially fix the problem remotely before the facility management team or before the customer even knows about it so you can see i'm just copying the text again from that grunfoss pump block that i'd already created and now i'm just renaming it to um yeah a wessex boiler Let's fast forward this. So yeah, all the details of the components are obviously written here. We want we want to know like the the max current draw as well, so we can size breakers appropriately further up and cables as well. Um, and also, once we've done all of this for all components, we can add up the the total current draw um, for like the main the main breaker or the main supply sorry you know just so we have got enough power being supplied to the to the panel to the system you know if everything's on we want to make sure that like there's enough power being fed to it Those square blocks, they're like terminals within the panel. So they're just, as you can see, they're just above that dividing line. You can see in, in pink terminal numbers. I always leave, what you see in pink, I always leave to the end once everything's done and then I can come back and label things in order. Because if you, if you start labeling things now at this early stage, it's highly likely that you're going to, you're going to have forgotten something. Um, so it just makes sense with things like that. Just wait till all the components are added, then put your like terminal numbers, your MCB numbers. Um, yeah, it's just a much better way of doing it. Anyway, that was the video. I hope you enjoyed. If you are an engineer, technician, business owner, looking to get involved with controls, specialize away from standard electrical standard mechanical hvac multi-skill yourself um links in the description we might be able to help you see you on the next video